crabgrass, is, is that a, a weed or a forage? A weed, good guess. It's certainly a weed if it's in my wife's flowers, right? If it's in your pasture, it, it may be a forage. We, we used to say in Virginia, if it wasn't for crabgrass and wiregrass, that's what we call Bermuda grass, be a lot of hungry cows in the, in the summer months. And, and, um, and there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, crabgrass is well adapted to this whole Mid-South region, you know, that includes Maryland and Virginia and West Virginia and Kentucky, Tennessee. It's an annual, it's a truly a annual, it's an annual warm season grass that, that uh, acts like a perennial through prolific reseeding. And I remember the first time we hit, grew crabgrass at the research station at Blackstone, I told my farm manager, I said, well, I want to make sure and let it go to seed so it reseeds itself for the next year. And he says, I want to know how to keep it from going to seed. And there's a lot of truth to that. Crabgrass is a prolific reseeder, but it does have to come back from seed every, every year. In a, in a grazing system, it's best managed um, kind of as a double crop with a winter annual. So something like annual ryegrass or small grain like wheat or cereal rye or barley or, or other small grains planted in late, late summer um, and early fall. So you'll get some growth during the winter months and most of your growth will come during the this, this spring before crabgrass germinates again. We'll start to see crabgrass emergence in late April and May. Um, in, in this region of the country. It's good yield potential, not as high as, as Bermuda grass, but, but where it beats out Bermuda grass is forage quality. It's really good in forage quality. Um, and, and animal performance will tend to be higher on um, crabgrass than on Bermuda grass. No prussic acid like we will find in sorghum species, uh, like sorghum sudan or sudan grass can accumulate nitrates under very high nitrogen fertility. Go ahead. When are you seeding your perennial cool season patch? So the the um, so getting it in early in the fall and then making sure you get good fertility so you get stand closure will help with the crabgrass. The the crabgrass is um, we we often talk about it taking pastures over, but it doesn't really take a pasture over. It's more of a species of opportunity, and so it it looks for an open space in the pasture. So if you graze a, a perennial pasture like a orchard grass or tall fescue pasture really hard and you kind of open that sod up, if, if you get a six inch spot, crabgrass is gonna grow in there. And um, so, so it kind of fills in where we give it an opportunity. If we have a healthy tall fescue pasture or an orchard grass pasture in this part of the state that has a nice dense stand, we're not gonna get crabgrass and it's not gonna grow, it doesn't have space. Yeah. So, so one thing you can do, how are you seeding? Are you using a drill or a? Yeah. So it's higher seeding rate can help you if you're using a drill. Drilling in two directions can help you get a, a faster stand closure. Yeah. So one of the issues with, with using your method is that one thing that crabgrass loves is soil disturbance. So, so you're disturbing the soil in, and you're getting that volunteer seed in contact with the soil. So next spring it's saying, thank you. Yeah, you know, thanks for getting me in contact with the soil and they start to germinate and come up. So that, that can be a little bit of a, a challenge. I mean, a, a no-till drill is nice because you don't have to till your soil, which is better for soil health in general. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other recommendation is get it in as early as you can in the fall and don't, don't spare fertility on it. You don't want, sometimes people will seed a cool season grass in the fall and it'll struggle because it's, 
um, nitrogen deficient. So a little bit of nitrogen at seeding can help to enhance that stand closure and, and limit grabgrass growth that following year. So in and then fertilizer stand in the spring before crabgrass germinates. So as we get into late February, early March, get, get some fertilizer on that stand so those seedlings get up and get stand closure and help shade the crabgrass out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You, usually, if if you're soil and water conservation district, or you can rent one somewhere, that's the ideal situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's let's move on. So. I just wanted to show you this picture. This was the first harvest of Red River crabgrass in 2001. One of the first crabgrass studies I planted when I went to Virginia. And it was so, so tall, it was almost scary. Um, this is an improved variety of crabgrass. There are several improved varieties available. Like Bermuda grasses, there's tremendous variation in ecotypes of crabgrass we commonly find on farms. Some are really productive and some are not as productive. If, if you want to try crabgrass in a forage system, I would recommend getting an improved variety like Red River crabgrass or uh, Quick and Big crabgrass or from um, uh, Elstel Farm Seeds or Al Dalrymple. And then there's one that's from Baron Brug, which is a mixture of those two called um, Mojo. And any of those will, will work. Uh, so we did some nitrogen work looking at, at nitrogen response to crabgrass. And, and what I want to point out is that we had maximum nitrogen response at 300 pounds of nitrogen. Don't, don't ever put that much nitrogen on. You want to be back here on the straight part of the curve in that 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen applied as a split application. But, but the point is, is that crabgrass, like other summer annual grasses, responds to nitrogen fertility. And, and with these summer annuals, it's important that, that you provide that fertility to, to get the yield out of these because you had go to all the expense of buying the seed and planting it. You want it to not be hindered by, by fertility within your grazing system. So again, where where um, crabgrass really excels is forage quality. Some of the in vitro work that we did, and that's when you take forage material and you take rumen fluid out of the animal and we'll have cows with big big rubber plugs in their side that you can pull out and get rumen fluid out. And you look at what, what the microbes digest when you put that forage material in that rumen fluid. And we had 75 to 90 percent digestibility in vitro digestibility, so very high digestibility with crabgrass. Um, crude protein ranged from 6 to 14 percent. 6 percent when it was senescing in the fall, when it was dying off as the uh, days got cold. But in season, we commonly got 12 to 14 percent crude protein, so good crude protein. And again, sensitive to nitrogen fertilization. This was a summary of work that R.L. Downrimple did at the Noble Foundation over several decades, and he looked at stocker cattle performance on crabgrass. When he had medium quality crabgrass, he got unsupplemented gains on stocker calves of 1.85 pounds a day, so good animal performance. Better quality crabgrass, you know, could push up to two to two and a quarter pounds a day without supplement on crabgrass. So quality is, is good with crabgrass. Direct head-to-head -head comparison with Bermuda grass, stalker calves gained a pound to a little over a pound a day, crabgrass a pound and three quarters a day.